president and joseph will be joining us live so we get more of what's been happening uh in parliament and joseph is on now uh joseph let's let's begin with why the um the the position on the committee left uh, by Samuel Okujeto Ablakwa has not been, been filled on this particular committee. So the explanation that's coming, which is something that's captured in the standing orders, uh, is actually that this is actually something that has to be done by what is called the committee of selection, which is usually chaired by the speaker himself. So at the beginning of every session of parliament, that committee then has to meet and then depending on whatever the agreements are, the level of both the majority side and the minority side, the committee then agrees on which member of parliament is supposed to serve on which committee. And then that committee then brings a report to the floor of parliament for the necessary approval. And then when that report is approved, then the committees are then con uh, considered duly constituted. So what has to happen is um, in terms of the replacement, a request has to go to the committee from the level of the leadership at the minority level in terms of whoever is replacing Mr. Kujetu Ablakwa. And the committee then has to approve. The committee brings a report to the plenary for approval. And it's after that report is approved that any new individual who is replacing Mr. Ablakwa can then go ahead and take up that position. And the explanation Mr. Gio Seusu, who is the chairman of the committee, gives is that um, in terms of replacing Mr. Ablakwa, decisions on that have to be taken at the level of the committee and they at the level of the appointment committee then just have to accept whoever the committee of selection uh, recommend for approval and it's eventually approved at the plenary and then that person can then come and sit in but that committee chaired by the speaker hasn't gone through that process yet which is what everyone is waiting for but as Mr. Seusu indicates um, he, at the level of the committee, all that they seek to do is to work as a team and when they have quorum, they go ahead and get the business done. And so the absence of one individual doesn't affect how they go through the processes and the kind of work that they do in terms of grilling the various nominees. Are there controversies surrounding the vetting of uh, Martin A.J. Mensakosa and how that, if it has been resolved today, was done? Before we get to the four who were uh, vetted, uh, who were supposed to be vetted today? And so, um, most likely, a resolution to the whole issue would be seen eventually on the floor. Um, but as um, the minority has indicated, um, they had actually indicated earlier that they weren't going to be part of the processes with regards to his approval, and they may not support his approval on the floor. And then we saw a situation where the minority MPs did not participate in the vetting of him and three others last week. Um, apart from the indicated boycott of his vetting, the explanation coming now is that the minority MPs say they thought that because the speaker had given a directive that MPs should go plant trees on Friday, the committee wasn't going to sit, which was how come they didn't participate in the processes. But as we heard the chairman of the committee indicate, at the end of the vetting processes on Friday, the committee concluded that they were recommending all the four they vetted for approval, including Mr. Jim and Sakosa. And um, eventually, if any opposition would come from the minority, then most likely that opposition would be on the floor. And it's one of two things. They may just decide to let it all go, or then they may then go ahead and mount that opposition. So we're waiting to see how the processes will unfold from tomorrow and in the course of the week when the report of the appointment committee on those who have been vetted is actually brought to the plenary for the necessary approval. This vetting, though, uh, the, the, the Deputy Foreign Affairs uh, De Minister Designate Thomas Mbamba session lasted 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes. Uh, help us wrap our head around uh, that incident. It was a very quick session chaired by the um, vice chair of the appointment committee, Alexander Penyo Markins, who is also the deputy majority leader. The chairman himself was actually caught up with flight delays in Kumasi, and so he couldn't then arrive in time for the processes to begin. So the less than 10 minute vetting session focused on a number of issues, including Ghana's appointment to the United Nations Security Council, which he thought was a very good development for the image of the country. And he again 
responded to a few questions as well having to do with how Ghanaians, particularly females who get stuck in places like the Middle East and are being used allegedly as slaves, can be rescued. And he said that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is working with other partners abroad to actually ensure that Ghanaians who work in the Middle East are safe. And then he was eventually discharged by the committee. But after that, um, ranking, uh, well, um, the minority chief, Muntaka Mumbarak, who is a member of the appointment committee, then came in after he had been discharged and they were waiting for the next nominee to actually come in and indicated that they, the minority, had not had the chance to be part of his vetting and they had some issues that they wanted him to actually clarify. And then there were issues having to do with uh, possible availability of quorum even when they began the setting. So eventually the decision was taken that he will be re-vetted and that vetting took quite a while and there were subsequent other questions to him about how Ghana Post can be revamped because he worked at Ghana Post for a very long while as a motor rider and um, he responded to all of those questions. So uh, eventually that process unfolded. Three other nominees appeared before the committee today in very brief sessions. Um, let's highlight the session of the Deputy Minister Designate for the Health Ministry, uh, Mahama Seydou, and he responded to a number of questions, including a question on the development that was revealed in the pay or die documentary that Corruption Watch and Joy News aired sometime last week, having to do with pregnant women still paying for services when it comes to maternal health, which is illegal per the provisions in the Health Insurance Act. And he said that he would recommend to his minister that the necessary investigation be done for those facilities that are still extorting money from pregnant women to be dealt with one way or the other. And again, he indicated that this is something that he thought was out of place and should not be happening. Um, he said that um, it was very much contrary to the provisions of the law, and so the steps would be taken to address that particular concern. He also responded to one other question having to do with the 111 district hospitals that, if you recall, President Akufado had indicated in one of his COVID-19 presidential addresses that were going to be built within a period of a year in order to augment the infrastructure when it comes to health facilities across the country. Um, the concerns are that about 14 months down the line, a lot of these projects have not even begun. And the Deputy Minister indicated that he's been briefed that contracts have been signed for 75 out of the 111 and that various processes to get the construction underway will begin sometime soon. So that's how the process actually unfolded. Tomorrow, we are expecting the final batch of four nominees to appear before the committee. And the last of the four would be Marco Krikumate, who is actually headed to the Ministry of Tourism as Deputy Minister Designate. You know, he used to work with the multimedia group. He would be the final person to appear before the committee late tomorrow uh, after three other individuals have been vetted. And then the committee would wrap up its work and bring its report to the plenary for the necessary approval of these um, 38 or so deputy ministerial nominee designates. We we'll look forward to that. But briefly before you go, the Insurance MP has been responding to some concerns that have come uh, on the back of how the MP's common fund, you know, was disbursed. Tell us briefly about that one. Uh, well, he used to be the former member of parliament um, in that particular constituency. Um, Kennedy can come and, you know, the Auditor General has um, allegedly indicted him over how money to the tune of 500,000 Ghana cities. That's actually meant uh, uh, to be money from the MP share of the District Assembly Common Fund was actually used because then the indication is that this amount was disbursed to residents as loans that should have been recovered but was actually never recovered. And so then the Auditor General's report, as we indicated yesterday, is actually asking that the MP and others take the necessary steps to pay back these sums. But the MP has been responding, sharing documents in which uh, he indicates that earlier the money was given out as loans, but when you read the provisions when it comes to the utilization of the Dish Assembly Common Fund, particularly the MP share of it, it allows for some of these monies to be given as grants so that then it helps boost businesses and don't have to be refunded necessarily. He explains that an official communication from his end went to the assembly asking for a reclassification of the loans as grants, which was eventually approved 
by the assembly. And so then he doesn't understand how come there is the request that those amounts be refunded because the loans have since been converted to grants. And so um, he doesn't necessarily have to refund those monies. And for him, there was a very good use of the public resources because then these were times of COVID-19. The KJTR market where a lot of the traders were operating from was not fully operational because of construction activities. And so it was very much unfair to him that the demand is being made that the said amounts be refunded. And so those are the responses that he's been given to the said indictment in the Auditor General's report that's been released a few days ago.